Hello everybody, welcome to the Boxing Locker. I am Matt Goddard and today I'm here to talk to you about the value of different looks in boxing. Now, by that I'm not referring to physical appearance, I'm not referring to the style of your shorts, I'm talking about the manner in which you present yourself to your opponent. Now, styles are something that is often talked about, but it's talked about in a singularity. So for example, people address the style of Floyd Mayweather as a singular form, you know, always oh, the Philly shell, he boxes in a half guard and uses the Philly shell. That is categorically untrue. If you look at Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, doesn't have a singular style, has tons of different looks. Same thing at all the greats throughout history. In fact, one of the fighters with the most singular styles who, who probably was limited in the number of looks that he gave was Muhammad Ali, you know. Um, a, a lot of times uh, uh, applauded as the greatest fighter or the greatest of all time. Um, and actually he was very singular in the manner in which he boxed potentially to his detriment in the long term. However, what do I mean by looks, okay? So when I say looks, what I'm talking about is the, the, the uh, position you place yourself in to engineer a response, okay? So, or, or to, to uh, portray a certain feeling or emotion or a certain um, level of composure, right? So for example, if, if I box in the half guard stance here, and I'm, and I'm in this position, and I'm doing that in mid-range. Now, if I wanna draw a shot from my opponent, they might be looking at me thinking, he's waiting for me to jab, he's waiting for me to jab. So, and this is something that Floyd demonstrates frequently. All of a sudden, I put the hands up, get my weight slightly forward, and I put the hands up, keeping the elbows in, hands nice and high. I'm giving the impression that I want them to punch, but I'm giving them the impression alongside that that I am susceptible to being hit. So I get here, and then my weight is over that front leg more. Let me show you over here. My weight is slightly over that front leg, not in front of, just over. My head is over that front leg. And then it gives me the opportunity to drop back and throw counters or to shift back out of position, do whatever I need to do. So the intent behind the look has to be the part that you understand, okay? So for example, I'm just gonna do a little, a little bit of look swapping here, and then I'm gonna talk you through it. So I'm gonna start off in my half guard. I'm moving around, use this little square as if it's the ring. So I'm moving around in half guard. Okay, so there I gave you four very clear different looks, okay? And I'll explain to you the intent behind each of them and why they have value and why, as long as I understand why I'm using it, it can be beneficial, okay? So first and foremost, the look I gave you was my basic stance, the half guard stance, okay? That portrays confidence, it suggests that I'm there waiting to counter, and, and it sets me up nicely to throw the shots I need to sh uh, throw, and it keeps me nicely balanced. So my weight's evenly distributed. I've got my weight sat back ever so slightly over that back foot, but the hips are central. I can do whatever I want from that position. Now, if you haven't seen my favorite boxing position video, check that out. I'll um, try to remember to put it into the, um, into the uh, description below so you can check it out. But, so that's the first look I've given you and, and that's what I'm portraying. Now, at that point, I then went into a high guard with that slight overhang over that front. I got my weight forward to draw a shot and then I can throw back counters. And then I relaxed and I moved around. Now I'm thinking I'm outside of range. What I'm trying to draw is I'm trying to draw an aggressive reaction from my opponent, okay? So I'm gonna try and pull them in. So I'm bouncing around, change of directions, a little bit of space. Another thing that you see Floyd do very effectively is that. Nice and relaxed, let my shoulders loosen off, conserving my energy, relaxing, trying to pull them in, trying to draw them in. And then what did I do after that? I dropped my hands and I got low. Now what I'm doing down here is I'm waiting. I'm here to draw a shot and then counter, draw a shot and counter. They know I'm waiting, I'm baiting them, and they know I'm baiting them, which means they're gonna be more cautious, which gives me more opportunity once I get there to suddenly start throwing some punches and return to another position. Uh, again, that's another look. And the final look that I gave you was a nice, low, high guard, weaving in, getting low. What does that mean? It means I'm feeling aggressive, okay? So I'm coming into somebody, I'm saying, look, I'm coming for you, I'm coming for you, I'm hunting you down, okay? This is, um, this is uh, a, an aggressive, uh, high pressure. It's, it's um, no matter what you're doing, I'm gonna be in front of you, I'm getting my head to your chest and I'm gonna work and we're having a fight now. And, and the transition between that may be beneficial, for example, if 
um, say I, I've landed a nice big shot on an opponent, okay? So I land a shot uh, through that position, slip, pop, big right hand. I see him hurt. Now, what I don't wanna do is just march in and think, yeah, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna get smashed. I wanna be smart about it. So I come in there with them hands high and I'm dipping and rolling, nice and low, keep my weight down, trying to draw them shots down so I can come back over the top again, work into the body. Again, everything in boxing is down to situation, position, and intent. Understanding the look that you are giving your opponent helps you to work around that situation, position, and intent. If my intent is to be a, a, a busy counter puncher, then I probably want to give them a nice, relaxed, composed look where they'll see some sort of vulnerabilities, right? I don't want to look like I'm locked up tight. I don't want to be James Tone in here like, okay, I'm coming for you, where everybody knows I'm gonna counter. I wanna look like I'm a bit loose, a bit free-flowing, so that I can draw the shot, boom, roll, move out, boom, slip back, boom, slip back. And I can't do that if they're not willing to throw the punches, okay? If I know that I'm gonna be a bit steadier, say for example, they move their feet quite a lot around, so I get a wider stance, I get a wider stance, nice wide legs, and I get my head low, so I draw the shots and I'm slipping, I'm slipping, popping out the body jab, coming over the top, rolling, moving around, shifting position, lots of changes of position, and then I can work from that. That's gonna work very well against an opponent who's trying to move around me and pick punches and kind of pepper their way to a win. Much the same way you saw um, Billy Joe Saunders boxing against Canelo. Canelo relaxed, let a bit more happen and just kept trying to pick the right shots, pick the big shots and it had its effect at the end. Um, with the hands up, okay, so hands up doesn't have to exclusively be a high pressure thing. Hands up can be a great way of drawing shots. So I sit back and I get the hands high, boom, short left hook. I sit back and I get the hands high, give them a bit of confidence, let them think I'm on the back foot, boom, boom. It works very well. Watch, um, watch Julian Jackson knock out Harold Graham. It's uh, unbelievable knockout, one of the best ever. He sits back on the ropes, Graham gets overconfident, warm, one of the biggest punches, it's overhand right, but one of the biggest punches you could ever possibly want to see and puts him to sleep. Um, so looks, the value of looks, okay, it's in, the, it's in the situation that you can engineer, it's in the way it enables you to uh, manipulate your opponent, and it's in the way that it enables you to be more effective in your work, okay? I don't always have to be throwing punches or moving my feet or moving my head to be effective. I can do it by selling them the psychology of what I'm doing. So I'm moving around bouncing, moving around bouncing, hands are nice and low, changes of direction. Where do I want them to be? They come in, legs wide and straight away. Now they think, oh, he's settled down, he's ready. I thought he wasn't ready, but he is ready. Now I'm here, bam, 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 snapping that jab in, bam, snapping it in. Catch with it, catch with it change of position. Now they start backing up, hands up, trying to give them a reason to throw the punch, hands up, throw the punch, they're trying to get them to throw the punch. Catch, boom, snap out that jab. Moving off, move round, keep them hands high. Boom, boom, move my head. Now they're getting a bit nervous, they don't want to throw punches. I got my hands up, so I drop the hands, I give them a look. I'm trying to draw the shot, eyes on the target, I'm staring at them, I'm looking into their soul. Come for me, that's what I'm saying, come for me. Throw your shot. All the while I've just occupied a minute of time, yeah? Half of the round, or a third of the round is gone. So now all of a sudden I'm here, and I've picked the shots. I look like I'm in control. Everything that I've done, I've exercised control over that scenario. I'm here, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at him. Slip and jab, over the top, roll out, move across, take a little step out, have another little look. Now they know, now they know what's coming, so they're thinking about it. Now they know. And now I'm gonna sit back here. Sit back here. Touch them with that jab. Touch them with that jab. They've gotta do something. They've just lost the first minute and a half of the round. They've gotta do something. Bow. Hands high, fill up the space. Another look. Fill up the space, occupy the space. Wrap up, clinch. Get the arm underneath, get the arm over the top, wrap them up, pull them in, get your head to one side. Breath says break, step off. Back in, move around, back, back, back. Winning with that jab. Just keep picking up, catch and jab at the same time. Back to the body. Slip back, throw the right hand, move. Relax, another look, another look. 
they come in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, I, 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 mean, I know you can't answer that, but what you have to understand is that when you watch the greatest fighters, it's never one look. It's never one look. Whether it's their head position over their feet, whether it's their shoulder position, whether I'm set up here to throw a left hook, I just look like I'm making myself vulnerable. They come into the body, but whether I'm sat here with my shoulder, whether I'm marching you down. If you watch the Floyd Mayweather Canelo fight, there's a there's a point in that fight when Floyd says to where Big Floyd says to Little Floyd, walk him down, walk him down, make him work, make him waste his energy, and he just walks at him with that shoulder up, shoulder up, dominates. What bop? Walks at him with that shoulder up. What? There's an enormous value in being able to present different looks, occupy your opponent's thought process, and sell them on different things, okay? Situation, position, and intent isn't just about what you're doing, it's about what you're able to make them do, or what they are perceiving, okay? It's really important, and things like this are part of the, um, the, the brain of boxing, boxing IQ, you know, you, certain fighters, people say, wow, great boxing brain, great boxing IQ. What demonstrates that? the ability to manipulate the opponent, to create and engineer the situation that you want to have an effective um, punch land or to, to uh, draw an opponent into applying greater pressure so that you can then land the shots that you want and walk them onto them, um, to, to push them back and put them at fear so they're a bit twitchier, a bit twitchier, and then you can land the shot that you want to land. All of these things are really, really important and really valuable things to learn. However, if you haven't got your fundamentals down, it's a waste of time doing any of that, okay? But... Please do this. Next time you watch a boxing match, especially a great boxing match, um, somebody like it, Inoue, Canelo, Crawford, Usyk, um, uh, Charlo, uh, anybody, any, any of the, the top 10, 10, 15 pound for pound guys, they all do it. You know, you watch uh, Jesse Rodriguez, watch um, Javonta Davis. Javonta Davis is, is incredible at giving different looks. Um, watch Devin Haney, watch... Uh, Tia Fimo, Tia Fimo against Josh Taylor is a great example of different looks. His hand position shifting, his head position shifting, his feet little faints. Okay, you, all of those things are made easier by the shift in looks because all of a sudden it gives the opponent something to think about. If I'm stuck rigid in the same spot all the time, it might work, it might get me to a certain level, but eventually it's going to come unstuck because it's predictable and we don't want to be predictable. One more thing to talk about is why having your lead hand down is beneficial. If I am here, everything that I can punch with is in the line of sight of the opponent, okay? So everything that I can hit them with is visible. So they can see it and keep their eye on it. So even if I'm really relaxed and I just throw it from there without any tell, it's gonna be easier for them to defend than if it comes from outside the line of sight. So my thumb is here and I throw that jab up from down there, bop, 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 and it can change frequently. Anyway, just an extra little tip. There we have it guys, that is why it is important to have different looks in bo boxing, the value of different looks, um, and I hope that helps you to A, understand boxing better, to witness greatness and figure out why they're so great, and also to improve your own boxing. Have a great day, don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff.